from the Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California, it's the Willy Hunter Show with Earl Skakel. Tonight's guests, comedian and personality, Gerard Carmichael, union representative, Teddy Kalivas. A performance by Lance Kent Stopolis. And now your host, Willie Hunter! <laughs> 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 Give for Earl Skakel, everyone. That was, uh... <clears throat> that was very good. Thank you. Very good. How are you feeling today? I'm gonna work on my baits. Oh, well. <laughs> There's a lot to do. I was backstage, I was thinking, I want to run for president. I vote for you. No, no, me and you, same ticket. I got too many skeletons in my closet. <laughs> Hunter Skanko, that sounds good though. Adam Hunter is running for president? No, Willie Hunter, me, the host, the guy standing here. Me and you, ticket, you know? I mean, you know, I, if they pull up my internet, uh, you're in big trouble. <laughs> Real big trouble. Ah, uh, well, I guess we're gonna drop that ticket. I was thinking we could run on the platform of Leave All Children Behind, you know? <laughs> I'm for that. Yeah, because they're ruining our nation. I think we all know that. Oh, yeah, kids are total cash cows. <laughs> you don't have kids, do you? Not that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, thank, you all, uh, thank all of you for coming out tonight. This is going to be a very fun show for you. Um, I'm backstage, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, and I'm, I'm like, oh my god. And I look nice, by the way. <laughs> Half the audience agrees, okay? Hey. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, oh my god, I look very young, and I thought about it. Because I had a birthday recently, I turned 26 years old. You ask, Willie, what did you do for your birthday? I'll tell you what I did for my birthday. I ate a mushroom pizza, minus the pizza and the mushrooms was psychedelic. That's what I did. Yeah. So I, I took this, I ate this pizza, and I was with some friends out, and we went camping, it was a great time, eight of us, and we had fun, we had a lot of fun. We ate our pizza, uh, mushroom pizza, without the pizza, but psychedelic mushrooms. Um, and then I freaked out and ran home like a little baby. I, um, I decided to run away from campsite, find a cop to hitchhock me to a local McDonald's, and got a cab ride from Calabasas. Yeah, it was $110 if you wanted what that price was. So it was a great birthday, actually. We have a great, great show. Uh, I'm really excited. Very excited. Uh, one of my good friends, very funny man, Mr. Gerard Carmichael is here. Right? Yes! Uh, uh, Teddy Kalibas, that's his name, is a union representative, so we're going to get something out of this uh, union representative. And also, it's Lance Can't Stop Us. Hey, Tony, can you flip the lights on? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah! Mm -hmm. I thought it was nice to a lot brighter than that. Oh, there we go! Oh, the lights are on. You know what that means? We gotta go to a commercial break, everyone. So right after this commercial break, Gerard Carmichael! Yeah. Every day, I have a headache. Every day. Even in the shower. <sighs> now I take Hebronol and I ain't fucking schwitzing. Oh man, this is exciting. Uh, I know you very well, and, yeah. and in this audience obviously don't know well. I know that you're from North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. North yes. Carolina. And a lot of people know this, before you did stand-up comedy, what did you do for a living? Uh, I, I was a shoe salesman. At? At the finish line. <laughs> Yeah, I worked at the finish line. Uh, and, and what city is this again? This is in Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem? I, I was the master of the Brainic device. The master? Yeah. I could measure people, but I was good. I could just like look at people and tell them what size shoe they were. The, the gift is not there anymore because you don't use it and God takes it away. Well, you got Timberlands on right now. 
Yeah. You got Timberlands on. Yeah, right? I have Timberlands on. We're back in 2003 right yeah, now. Yeah, well, I'm, because uh, because I felt like I was getting too soft. <laughs> and so, and because I wear sweaters. And Do you stuff. know what those boots are actually used for? They you for uh, emotionally to keep me grounded. <laughs> I don't know. These boots are keeping me. These are the only things that is keeping me from being Donald Glover right now. Without those, I'm like, I mean, my hair will get nappy again, and I'll be, you know. Uh, okay, so you worked at a shoe store, which is, which is mm -hmm. I find fantastic because I, I I've had a lot of sales jobs. Worked at a fireworks stand. I mean, you told me about that. Yeah. Well, I always think you, can I tell you, I always think you're lying when you say that. I'm not it's lying. such a random job that you always say. It's not that random. I was, a, I was a youth umpire. Can I tell you my favorite, my favorite Willie job thing is the fact that uh, Willie got hired and became the manager of uh, Hardee's within like six days. That's very true. And, and, this is, and this is while being a comedian. He went home. He went home. Applied at Hardee's and then he was the most well-spoken person and then took over that Hardee's and then quit the brother That is an back. actual story. That is very true. Yeah. I went home. I this is actually home. like maybe last summer. Yeah, this is very recent. And, uh, and, but you know, you go home and your, your parents don't understand you doing stand-up and you don't make money. And she's like, well, you know, they're high down at Hardee's. Like, mom, I'm only here for a month. I mean, yeah. what's the point? I was like, well, I guess I could just work there for a month. And I went down there and I applied, and the guy goes, you're very well spoken. I can see a lot of good things for you. How about well, he really said well He's, spoken? Yeah, he did. Oh, God. He was falling asleep during the interview. Like, I had to wake him up. <laughs> Don't you want to just, like, like, aren't you, like, tempted to just go back and just take over Alabama? You know you could do that. <laughs> like, you could, you could, a legitimate thing, you could become mayor of Alabama within, like, two years. First of all, Alabama is a state. Uh, uh, yeah, governor. Well, uh, it's, it's it's to me, Alabama's just a big town. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so funny, it's like Gerard has seen where I'm from on uh, Google Maps. Google Maps <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we we and the little to town that I'm from, very small town, is Heflin, Alabama. Greenville, he's from Greenville. Alabama. <laughs> Greenville does not exist. It's not a real city. It's made up, and Forrest Gump it does not exist. <laughs> No, but the point is, uh, so you saw where I grew up in Google's map, yeah. right? and, uh, and what did you say about my town? It is not shit, babe. No, 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 but what was the line you said? What you said? He said it looked like... God, what did I say? I, this is what you said. You said it looks like people, people die of boredom or something. I don't know. I wish you would have said that. Actually, you said it looks like slavery happened there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like see places where slavery looks like fresh. Like it's like, like it's not like, that fresh. fresh. Like where it's just like, like it's like oh man, like you could smell it on Google Maps. Like it's just like the impression. Like, but you're from North Carolina. Google Maps. I actually saw a nigga running. <laughs> like you can see it, and you actually see him. <laughs> like take that with you. Can I say nigga on the Willie Hunter? Well, you already did. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, these, it's these damn Timberlands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm from there, and then we talk about where you're from, and you say it's the hood. You're from the hood. Yeah. Like, you, you're, like how many people... Not to overuse niggas, but they died there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. How many people that you know mm -hmm. have been murdered? Uh, I was going through... I have... Wait a minute, you were going through... Well, I was going through my phone. I have... I have... <laughs> I have 12 dead people's phone numbers. <laughs> well, I have 12, 12 people who are now gone over drug money. In my drug money? Mostly. In, what type of drug? Of, a lot of my friends die over drug money. What type of drug? Uh, Please let it be good. Well, I mean, it's like coke and crack and shit. That's, that's good, right? It's decent. It's respectful. Like, if you could die over a drug, that would be like... Well, if you could die over a drug, what would it be? If I... If I wait, could? <laughs> or had to? Or had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> You, said, you made it sound like it was an opportunity. Well, because we had drugs backstage. If you, if you were to be so lucky as to get murdered over drug money. Oh, Nicole. Sometimes my machine just doesn't get the job done. Alright, sweetie. Machine's off to work. You making dinner? Mm, maybe. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm having a lot of problems with my machine. Can you send someone out to service me? Eh? I was gonna get a different one years ago, but I was like, oh, we'll see, but... Mm. Hi! Just got a small wiring problem. You should take some jiggling to get it done. So how's this thing handle a load of whites? Don't be 
be surprised. Yeah. It's been known to hold two loads at once. Jesus. Back in the day. Get to it. On account of I'm sad and new. On account of you found somebody new. On account of I lost the love of you. Gee, I wish I could meet Moppy. Whoa, 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 Moppy! Yeah, hey, hey, how's it going? You must see Moppy all psych every day! Yeah, yeah, uh, actually, uh, I don't. First, I'm lactose intolerant, and, uh, second, they're just, they're pretty sweet. They're a little too sweet for me. It's probably from all the vitamins, right? Yeah, you're gonna, you probably die when you're about, I don't know, you got 10 years if you keep eating these. when you first came out and I became a fan of yours over one joke. What was the joke? You know the joke. The George Washington. The George Washington joke. This hey, like can I tell you? That yeah. was the first and last time you've ever complimented me, Will. <laughs> and I cherish that moment. I really do. I, I really, don't do that much. Can I tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you? I'll never forget it. We were, it was outside of iOS and you ran out and stopped me. I didn't run out. You ran. You were like panting. Uh, yeah, first of all, you were panting. I, don't, I don't run to tell anyone they need to get a job. You no. did, man. I may have told someone to run after you so they the, tell you to come the, back to me. The parameters of our friendship have since changed, but we used to like respect each other. It's <laughs> very true. But it was the George Washington joke, and I, I, I mean, I don't want you to just, I don't want you to tell the joke, yeah, but I want you to like tell the joke. You know what I mean? Nah. Can I try to tell it yeah, directly? You can do it. I don't think I can do it. You can do it. You can do it better than I can. Now. There's no way. I don't remember it that well. Well, then, anyway, the, 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 let's talk about the, the premise of the joke was uh, George Washington had how many slaves? Uh, the number would change. 127. Like 127, yeah. Prime number, I think. Um, 127 slaves and about... Like 14 of them were borrowed from his next door neighbor. And which is a real fact. Which is a real like, fact. And already, the, you know, I'm like, oh my god, this is uh, this is insane. Yeah. And then you took it to the level of, uh, can you imagine? Well, because I I figured that like George, they knew he was dying, and his next door neighbor needed those slaves. <laughs> Like, you know, like, I guess if you knew somebody had some of you, yeah, like, 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 you're like, 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 like a yeah. hammer. Yeah. And you knew they were dying, you're yeah. like, let me get this. Because once somebody goes, yeah, yeah. it states and, and stuff. Then, and then, you know, like you said, the neighbor came to, like, like George Washington's on his deathbed in his house, and the neighbor came and knocked on the door. Yeah. And uh, what did he say? You got those niggas that let you hold <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I became a fan of his comedy. <laughs> Joke. That was the joke. We're all united by niggas. Oh, yeah. I, it was, this is uh, so. I'm, actually, you are a good friend of mine, and I, I, I'm willing to. You keep saying that as if, as if. Well, I'm actually reading it off this paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good friend of mine. I wrote that down four yes. times. All right. Uh, <laughs> and I'm very happy for you uh, to be on my show. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me. Uh, have you had a good time? This is fantastic. Would yeah. you want to stay at least for the next guest? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll stick around. Ah, that's cool then. All right, uh, so we're gonna take a commercial break, and we'll be back with Teddy Kalinas here. Yeah. Αυτή η σιγάρος είναι το μεγάλες και το όλο σιγάρος. Okay, δεν είναι κρεβάτης, δεν είναι πεπονής, δεν είναι ε, κρεβατοκάμαρα. Όχι, όχι, όχι. Αυτή είναι το μεγάλε μαλάκα. Δεν είναι μπούτσο, δεν είναι ε, ε, κουμπουλόι και το Αμερικανός και το η, α, η Γερμανία. Δεν μου λέει τίποτα. Αυτή είναι το μπούτσο. Ξέρεις, ξέρεις ο δεν ξέρεις. Τι μαλάκα εσύ να πω. Ε, ο, ο, ε, πρέπει να πάμε χορέψουμε μαλάκα. Όχι δεν πρέπει να πάμε χορέψουμε μαλάκα. Σκύλο γύρω μαλάκα. Και το αυτή. Ατσέ. Ατσέ.
You guys seem very excited. <laughs> uh, my second guest tonight is Ted Kalibas. Uh, he is the head of the union representatives uh, here in Los Angeles. Um, that's what we're taping at today for welders. And we're, Gerard's going to stay with us in this girl over there. Uh, Ted, how are you doing? Not bad. How are you, Willie? Thanks for having me today, man. Yeah, I mean, we, we fell short on gas and we said, grab that guy. I'm glad I could be a fall through for you. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I, I need to know what exactly is union representative of welders? I don't. Do they have welders have unions? Absolutely. Uh, basically, what I do is I kind of oversee certain delegations of uh, welders, primarily right now in Los Angeles County. I'm in a local 572, 572, and. Uh, Basically what we do is there's a lot of contracts out right now with welders and sometimes if the bids are too high, contractors don't follow through on them. I mean, is there a big problem with welder contracts? I don't understand. I mean, they're not getting paid right. I mean, what do welders do? I mean, they just weld. Absolutely, but they're unsung heroes. If you look at like the Golden Gate Bridge, if it wasn't for welders, that wouldn't have been built. Yeah, but that was like, what, 50 years ago? Well, the Bell, Bell Atlantic strike actually really had us in a... Uh, in an uproar, because what happened was they were actually contracted by General Mills, and General Mills didn't actually go through, so they had to sublet it, and we had to have scab welders. Scab welders? Oh Absolutely. boy! You mean like you know, like when they like they have like those hotel representatives striking the place, the hotel, and they're like, hey, we'll just hire anyone off the street. So they do that with welders? It's very similar. Yeah, they do. What they'll do is people will go around, they'll scour around like auto body shops, and they'll just find welders that are out of work. And they'll just hire them on for contract for a lot less. And these poor welders are, you know, left to have, you know, they have to go on unemployment and they can't fill their, feed their children. They're in welding school. That's, that sounds horrible. Um, yeah, I, I wish I was more aware about this. And I'm glad that we're bringing this up tonight so people will know about it. This is a big issue. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, my uncle was a welder. I bet. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was a welder. He was. And he was also an alcoholic. Now, is alcoholism a problem with welders? Huge. Huge problem. <laughs> uh, the problem is that what happens is that they don't get these bids. And then when these bids don't go through, their union fees are still up there. You know what I'm saying? They still pay for it every single month. Because we take care of our guys. But because of that right there, happy hours forever. They just drink all the time. I guess my question is, uh, are you a former welder yourself? Or... I, I was an apprentice welder. Oh. But you never became an actual welder. No, what I did was, when I went into that specialized field, I realized that my job was just taking care of the men out there welding. <laughs> I didn't want to actually... You know, it takes a very person. special person to realize what you're good at, and you're good at representing welders. Absolutely. We're going to be back right after these messages. We're back here with Teddy Kalibas, everyone. So, what's your question? When I reach deep down within myself, I find sophistication. The quality of my complexity is represented by the quality of my colors. I carry myself on a strong foundation with the ability to walk on clouds. Enough of the poetry. I'm better than you. I cut it off. I, I'm, I'm shocked, and I don't want to leave these two guys over here. You, do any of you guys have a specific question, uh, specific, excuse me, to ask him? Um, I guess, do you, do you feel, do you ever feel like underappreciated for what you do in welding? Sometimes I do, but honestly, it's just, uh, it's one of those things. It's, you know, I mean, everybody kind of just lacks the credit they deserve sometimes with things, and I'm, I'm happy with my, with my life. I think I'm, yeah, no. You, wait, you you you, you, mm -hmm. you don't so you don't weld anymore. I, I was trying to figure out. He doesn't. He was an no, apprentice I, I was welder, an apprentice welder oh, okay. that actually.
actually never weld, they went straight to representing welders. Oh, yeah. so you never got he, certified. I never. Yeah, you never, never got know. certified. I never got certified. Uh, we is got, that a dream of yours, to actually be, become a welder? It is, to some degree, but honestly, when we got to the part we had to weld mufflers, I just couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, you know. But I think one day I'd like to do it, maybe like an athlete going back to school. And weld? Well, kind of weld. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's back up here for a moment. I never mean to laugh at you because obviously you go through, you go through, I mean, people probably laugh in your face a lot. And, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, why don't you just become a welder? I mean, you can do it. Like, my uncle went to trade school and it was like, like that. I don't. I don't. Guess I'm kind of scared to do it. To be honest with you, I've been. I've been in the front lines for so long with the with the unions. To go back to be a soldier now is just too much. A soldier. <laughs> in the, he takes his job very seriously. Very seriously. I tell my guys when we go out there, it's it's like a battle battleground. I never tell you. Kind of like a boy scout a little bit. I get that a lot. Yeah. I get that a lot. Have you ever did any boy scout stuff? Thirteen years. Thirteen. So you did more boy scouts than welding. Absolutely. That's what I learned to be a union representative. Leadership, leadership in the boy scouts. Yes. Yes. Do you have something wrong? Did, did you say you did boy scouts for thirteen years? <laughs> no. I believe that. No. 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 Uh, this is turning into an interrogation now. No, I was in the boy. I'd love to look at your internet catch. <laughs> mm. What? <laughs> so you were in Boy Scouts. That's that's yeah. fantastic. Thirteen years. Oh, what's the next? What's the next? So, so we have this strike going on with the welders. We're going to squash it. You feel good about that's going to happen? There's going to be a resolution here. Oh, there is no strike right now. Oh, with the welders. Then why the hell are you here? You wanted a union representative. I, re I represent unions. And hey, what do you, what do you like, what's like your day like? Could you walk me through like this? Uh, first thing I when I wake up in the morning, kind of, uh, we get about 8.15, I usually start about 9, 9.45 at work. Okay. Usually it's 9.30, but I've been there for quite a while, so I skim it about 15 minutes late. It's one of the perks you get working in the place for so long. And, uh, uh, yes, sir. Is your first stop at the local jamboree? No, <laughs> no, no, no. He's probably stopped for a biscuit. I get it all. I get it all the time. Everybody wants to wipe, crack wise at me. But, uh, I, I believe you're a good guy. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're a good guy. I mean, you, you mean well. You're in the Boy Scouts for 13 years. 13. You know? Yeah. Well, my question to yes. you. Uh, <clears throat> so, so there's no strike going on. Mm -hmm. What is the next step for you, personally, besides being a union representative? What about you as a person? What do you see Ted Kalibas doing? Ted Kalibas is a guy that uh, has always been kind of just hard-headed, I'll be honest with you. Okay. Really, man. And, yeah. You ever thought about going back to the Boy Scouts? No, not at this time, no. <laughs> oh, not at this time. Oh, you were already there for 13 years. 13 years, that's a lot of time. Maybe a camp counselor, you know, something like that. Oh, yeah, put them around more kids. Like, we don't know if he touched little boys, all right? So don't, let's not jump to that conclusion. Have you touched little boys? I specifically said you weren't. I did say that. I picked him up off the street and I said I wouldn't bring that up. Uh, Ted, Ted I, I think that's our time. Uh, thank you so much for being here, first well, of all. Thank you, thank you very uh, much. And drop card yeah. model as well, man. Ted Clean is a drop card model. Huge treat coming up. Dancing sensation, Lance Kenstopolis. Mommy, Daddy, make that for you? Yeah. yeah. My daddy was a sock puppet. When I burnt his eggs, he'd shove bars of soap up his ass and beat me with them. You have hopes and dreams. I used to have hopes and dreams. I want to go to Pepperdine. But affirmative action's a bitch. So while Sugar Bear's living it up in Malibu, fucking a see a rich white girl puss, I'm over here at DeVry with Booberry, getting hand jobs from Gilfs. Sorry, things didn't work out for you. But isn't Moppy part of a balanced breakfast? Look, it's, it's pronounced Mopey, okay? Mopey. Welcome back to the 
the show, everyone. Welcome back. Our talent for tonight, our headliner, our, our main man, our dancing sensation. Very happy to have him here tonight. Everyone, please give it up for the one and only Lance Can't Stop Us. Rest. <laughs> 